Hey yo, shout out to the top percent, that's you guys, I'm Rata Joey, this is Future Sight, and today we're covering Sigilith. Sigilith is a basic psychic type Pokemon with 90 hit points, the ability Safeguard, which prevents him from being damaged by any Pokemon acts, one attack called Psychic, which for a Psychic Energy and Double Colorless allows you to do 50 damage, plus 10 more damage for each energy attached to the defending Pokemon, a weakness to Psychic, and a retreat cost of 1. The reason we're looking at Sigilyph right now is due to his rising popularity throughout the City Championships, and basically how he's risen from being a possible tech to actually being his own solidified tech. Currently, the format is full of EX Pokemon. We've got Kelio. Darkrai, Rayquaza, Landorus, and each and every deck in format tends to use Mewtwo as a backup attacker. That being said, Sigilyph stops all of them. None of them can attack through him. Each and every deck in format has to rely on a secondary attacker to get around Sigilyph. Kaleo would have to rely on his Blastoise, Darkrai has to rely on Hydreigon, Landorus would have to rely on Terrakine, and using you 2 as your backup attacker no longer factors in against Sigler. With all that said, what do we run with Sigler? What can we use to actually take our opponents by surprise and basically give Sigilyph an additional edge? The first card I want to look at is actually a Pokemon that was pretty popular during the end of last season, but during recent tournaments seems to have fallen off the radar. That Pokemon is Tornadus X. The major reason I want to look at Tornadus X is actually to place him in the deck in place of Mewtwo. By removing Mewtwo from your list and replacing him with Tornadus, you instantly lose the problem of the Mewtwo War. Without a Mewtwo, you can't enter the Mewtwo War. And effectively, Tornadus doesn't have the same shortcomings as Mewtwo. With a Mewtwo out, your opponent can effectively control your damage output to a certain degree. With Tornadus, they can't do that. The damage that Tornadus outputs is all on Tornadus, not on the defending Pokémon. Another reason I want to look at Tornadus is the whole fact that it can do one thing that Mewtwo cannot do. And that is the fact that it can donk more than half of the format. Your opponent starts Lone Squirtle, good game sir. Your opponent starts Lone Dino, good game sir. Your opponent starts Lone Sableye, that's nothing a plus power can't fix. Your opponent starts Lone Dynamo, once again, good game sir. Whereas Mewtwo, in the same situation, can only really donk the Lone Dynamo start. So that's a situational start in one deck, compared to a situational start in pretty much any deck in the format. With that being said though, Tornadus does have a prerequisite for it being able to get that donk. Where Mewtwo is just fueled up double colorless, Tornadus needs double colorless and a stadium. Which neatly leads us on to what stadiums can we run for this deck? The first stadium is probably the most obvious, but I feel it needs to be said anyway, and that is Sky Arrow Bridge. Tornadus has a retreat cost of 1, so does Sigla. With Sky Arrow Bridge, your entire deck effectively has free retreat. You don't have to worry about digging for switches, you don't have to burn energy to retreat, you can just swap and change your frontal attacker if and when you need to. That being said though, you can only run full Skyro Bridge. What if you wanted to run more stadiums? What else can we put into a Sigilyph deck that could really help? There's potentially Pokemon Center, I guess. But, but the problem with Pokemon Center is the benefit that you can gain on your side of the field can also benefit your opponent, and you don't want to give your opponent any kind of advantage. So, with that said, what else is there? Um, let's see, what else could we use? Oh wait, uh, we do have Tropical Beach. Sigilyph is being used predominantly as a lock deck. You're going to be using it to stop your opponent attacking. That being said, if you're locking your opponent, that means that you can very easily buy yourself extra turns to just set up the rest of your field. You can send up a signal with no energy attached and slowly build it up. As long as you're actually achieving the lock, sending up Sigilyph with no energy isn't going to hurt you because your opponent can't attack through it. That being said, as you're slowly building it up, if you hit that tropical beach, play it down. You can't attack with Sigilyph, so why not use what would have been your attack to draw an up to seven cards in your hand? It's more pluses, it accelerates the deck, and even just drawing one or two cards can help you in the long run. 
Before I actually finish up on the whole Tornadus aspect of the deck though, I feel I should actually like, validate this card over Mewtwo a bit, little bit more. At no point do I want to turn around and say that Mewtwo is a bad card, Tornadus is better. No, that is not the case, and yeah, Mewtwo is a very powerful card. The reason I'm going for Tornadus in this deck is mostly the whole fact that, as I said, Tornadus can dunk. So you've either got an incredibly short game, or you can flush your opponent into a long game. You don't really lose out on either thought. Also, Tornadus' weakness and resistance are a lot more favourable compared to Mewtwo's. Mewtwo has no resistance at all and a weakness to Sidekick, so effectively he's weak to himself and he's also weak to opposing Sigwits. This predominantly leads to the Mewtwo War. With Tornadus, there is no Mewtwo War. You don't have to worry about weak being weak to Sidekick. When you actually look at the format, you'll realise there's very little electric you have to fear. Currently the only real electrically driven deck are the eel variants. So you've got decks like Rayquaza eels, and that's the only real thing you have to worry about with an electric weakness. And even then, if they come at you with a Rayquaza, you know, it's not hitting your weakness. So all you have to really worry about in that matchup is, do they run Raikou, and are they going to attack with an electric? That being said, that is only one deck in the entire format, whereas every deck in format will run at least one Mewtwo, meaning you're exchanging a weakness that you have to every deck for a weakness to just one deck. With that being said, what else can we actually run in this deck to improve its chances to actually make the lock more effective? The first thing that springs to mind has to be the hammer combinations. Crushing Hammers and the Enhanced Hammers. The reason you really want to run these, or at least consider finding space for them, is just the pure fact that while you've got your opponent on the lock, you really want to try and put them as much of a disadvantage as you can. You want to try and limit their attacks as much as possible. So in the early stages of the game, if you can manage to get another lock up, there's going to be nothing more frustrating for your opponent than just go Crushing Hammer, Pitch on your energies, Enhanced Hammer, get rid of that DCE to just stop your opponent attacking constantly. So, not only do you stop your opponent being able to attack through to you, but you can also prevent them from trying to set up something that isn't an EX to try and attack you. You can take away their options, you can really limit how useful their board can be to them. All the while, you're buying yourself more turns, you're actually buying yourself more time to effectively just whittle down your opponent's Pokemon, and slow but surely win yourself the game. While on the subject of Disruption, there's another card that I feel this deck benefits from immensely. It's not been released yet, but we are expecting it in our next set, and that card is the Poison Hypnotic Beam. For those who don't know what it does, Poison Hypnotic Beam is a trainer item card. When played, you poison your opponent's active Pokémon. You then flip a coin, and if you hit heads, the defending Pokemon is asleep. Now, the major reason you really want to run this is just for the poison. That extra 10 damage, just nudging the opponent's defending Pokemon just a little bit closer to a knockout. It's an effective way of just getting in a cheeky little extra 10 damage. It's uh, effectively an additional plus power. It gets around cards like Eviolite. It makes cards like Large Club pointless. Plus, it's a lingering back. In most Dark Ryan matchups, you'll find your opponent isn't running Switch. Why don't they run Switch? Because they've got free retreat most of the time. You hit their heads, they're asleep. Now they really have to hope they are playing Switch, or they have that, that one-off tech, Keldia. In short, Poison Hypnotic Beam is an amazing card for just getting that little bit of extra damage on the board and maybe adding a little more disruption to the deck. Another way of effectively getting a lock and keeping it up as long as possible. Moving away from disruption, another card I actually want to cover is, oddly enough, Gold Potion. Gold Potion is an A-Spec Trainer card that allows you to heal 90 damage off of your active Pokemon. With Sigilith, that's effectively max potion without cost. The major drawback with the card is... It's an ace back, so you can't run Gold Potion and Computer Search. But for players who are struggling to get their hands on Computer Search, Gold Potion could be a route to go. It could buy the deck a little more survivability if the lock isn't put exactly going your way. With that handful of cards covered, I'd actually like to move on to some of the perceived weaknesses with the Sigurd deck and how I feel I've tried to cover them with the cards I've just presented to you. The first major weakness I can see with Sigurd is actually its incredibly low hit points. 90 isn't a hard number to hit, even with a non-X Pokemon, and a lot of the non-X backup Pokemon we have in format do hit for 90. If you're in the Electric matchup, E-Electric with 3 Energonic can hit for 90. That's a one-shot on Sigurd. In Keldeo Blastoise, 
Blastoise requires four energy to attack. If all four of them are water, then Blastoise will swing for a hundred. Another one shot. In Darkrai Hydreigon, they have Hydreigon, which can swing for 140, which quite frankly is a definite pocket on anything that's not any X, with one or two exceptions. With that said though, that's why the deck has to have a secondary attacker. If your opponent goes up into a backup attacker or using their main engine as an attacker, you can't just rely on Sigluff anymore, his low hit points are a drawback. That's why you won either the Mewtwo or the Tornadus. I've chosen Tornadus, mostly for the fact that it's got an extra 10 hit points over Mewtwo, it also doesn't have a weakness to an opposing Mewtwo, so you can get Tornadus out and it can last at least two turns, whereas Mewtwo might only last one if your opponent goes for their own Mewtwo. Another reason for running the Tornadus in this matchup is actually one of Sigilyph's bigger weaknesses, and it's oddly enough a fighting matchup. Being a Psychic Flying type, you think that the fighting matchup would be no problem for Sigilyph, but Sigilyph has no resistance to fighting type, and the most common fighting type we're going to see coming up after a knockout is, 9 times out of 10, going to be the standard Terrakian. Now, Terrakian can come in for 2 energy and swing for 90, a one-shot on Sigilyph. Next turn, they attach the 3rd energy, Terrakian is swinging for 90 all day long. That's another reason to run Tornado. Tornadoes naturally resists Terrakian, meaning that anything coming from Terrakian is already minus 20. Terrakian at full force is going to be swinging for 70. That's a 3 shot on Tornadus. Get the EP light onto Tornadus, it's minus 40. All of a sudden it's 2 for 50 and then 3 for 50. It's 4 turns to knock you out while you take it out in 2 with or without a stadium in play. Another strong advantage that Tornadus has is the fact that once you get that stadium out you don't have to ever worry about not being able to hit 2 for 60 anymore. Currently in format nobody's running any cards that turn around and say take a stadium and discard it. The only way to get rid of a stadium is obviously to replace it with another stadium and Tornadus doesn't really care who put the stadium in play as long as there's a stadium in play he'll do that for 30 damage on double pulls so as long as you hit one of your stadiums or your opponent decides to be kind of to give you a stadium once it's there you don't have to worry about it anymore stadium in play it's 2 for 60 3 for 100 you can 2 shot on 3 shot until your heart's content with that said I feel I've run the subject dry if you like what you've heard don't forget to rate comment subscribe all that good stuff. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Until next time, I've been Rata Joey. You guys are top of sense. Laters.